Okay, so we'd like to welcome everyone to the 2021 Sports Awards Ceremony. To kick off this evening's celebration, we'd like to ask that you please rise in honor of America while ESM's Amber Cardarelli, Jessica Griffin, and Kaylee Blue sing our national anthem. Job. Well, we're back, and we made it, sort of. Uh, this is much better than last year, I can tell you that, uh, that's for sure. Uh, but in a year of the unusual, this too is different, but very exciting. I can't express how happy I am for all of our student athletes who were given the chance to compete this year. This experience has truly proven how important athletics are and why the opportunity to participate means so much to so many. In the fall, it was the first time in a long time that you could interact with your peers, have in-person conversations, reestablish friendships, and be high school kids again. Athletics have a way of bringing people together, and this year they helped restore some order to the chaos that surrounded us on a daily basis. I can't thank the student athletes enough for their flexibility, their perseverance, and willingness to do whatever it took to compete for ESM this year. You were all amazing. To the coaches, your patience, ability to adapt, and dedication to our student athletes was on full display this year. Protocols, procedures, schedule changes, and forced quarantines significantly changed the coaching landscape. Thank you all for taking it all in stride and for remembering the reasons we all got involved in coaching. It's about the kids. It's always been about the kids. Thank you, coaches. To the athletic supervision staff, that endured a major shift in how we had to manage contests this year. Few will ever know how much time and effort goes into a successful home contest. You all do it better than anyone around. Thank you all for helping to keep our students, our coaches, and our spectators safe. This job would be impossible without you. Thank you, supervisors. Rob, Brian, Larry, and his crew at the high school. Tom, Jeff, Brian, and John at Buildings and Grounds. Thanks for not only the setup tonight, but for all of the extras you had to endure this year to get us to a point where we could actually have games in our facilities. Thank you, guys. To the Transportation Department for their tireless work day in and day out to make sure our kids are delivered safely and on time. The 
The work you've done this year is nothing short of amazing. Thank you, transportation. To Don, Gene, Pat, and Chris at the high school. Don, Cheryl, Paul, and Paul at the middle school. We spent far too much time together this year, and I'm humbled by the work you put in to make sure our kids can safely compete. Thank you all. To Donna, Tom, and Greg for all the support throughout the year. I'm lucky to have the opportunity to work with people that value athletics and continually fight for our kids. Thank you guys. And lastly, to Karen, who's been my rock throughout this entire ordeal. We've been through a lot over the past six years, none more trying than the last 15 months. I thank you as a friend for everything you do. Much of it is unheralded, but all of it is necessary to make the ESM athletic experience the best it can be for our student athletes. Your value to ESM athletics is unmatched. Thank you, Karen. We are going to kick off the awards ceremony tonight by honoring a championship team from the fall. I'd first like to introduce the 2020 SEAC Empire Division Varsity Girls Coach of the Year, Jamie Ballard. Our girls soccer team, winners of the SEAC Empire Division, when your name is called, please come down to accept your award and find your spot in the risers for a team picture. I can ask Jamie, Jamie, we have not, just so you know, we had an undefeated season here in the fall, which was absolutely fantastic. I don't know if it's ever been done in the history of the school, but I wanted to congratulate you guys and congratulate the girls on that team. Absolutely fantastic. I look forward to better things. Even better than the next year. Katie Andrus. Isabel Chemistry. Gianna Capagna. Katie Cox. Jessica Griffith. Abby Hudgens. Jenna Hodges. Elena Griffith. Laura Marker, Giselle Mecklehem, Adam Peterson, Angelina Montero, Leo Rem, Laura Zittnick, Sarah Starr, and Natalie Sturry. Your 2020 undefeated. Coach Waller, I ask you to come stand out here as we're going to present some more girls' soccer awards. The next award is the K Strong Award. This yearly memorial award is given in recognition of Kara McDougall and all that she meant to the girls' varsity soccer program. The award's name was inspired by Liz Strong, the organization founded by Lance Armstrong, that grew out of his personal fight with cancer. This award's meaning, however, was inspired purely by Kara. Each letter of the word strong represents a trait that made Kara such a unique person and an excellent soccer player. S is for supercharged, T for talented, R for relentless, O for outgoing, N for not afraid, and G for go big or go home. The soccer team voted on which current player best embodies these characteristics. It is my privilege to 
to award this year's K-Strong Award to both Abby and Jenna Hudgens. The 2020 
soccer season saw us earn a co-player of the year award uh, for the uh, this individual was the 2020 SCAC player first team all first team all CMY third team all state uh, and also like I said earned the co-player of the year award I'd like to bring up to the field Zach Schubel.
Congratulations. Next up, MVPs and MIPs for the winter season. When your name is called, please find yourself in the rises for a picture at the end. Boys basketball, MVP, Devin Moscato, welcome. Boys basketball, MVP, Nick Brown. Boys basketball, MVP, Jimmy Burns. Boys basketball, most improved player, Gavin O'Tailing. And boys basketball, most improved player, Stevie Graham. Girls basketball, MVP. Angelina Bolcaro. Yeah. Most improved player, girls basketball, Lauren Leannon. MVP, boys bowling, Brett Smith. Most improved bowler, Luke Mika. Most valuable bowler, females, America, Carhartt. Most improved bowler, Olivia Nissen. Most valuable cheerleader, Haley Beechner. Most improved cheerleader, Kaya Gaskins. Winter MVPs and MIPs. Okay. 
MVPs and MIPs for the fall two sports. Most valuable cheerleader, Giuliano, Giuliano Riccio. Most valuable cheerleader, Danielle Hare. Football, MVP, Makai Combs. Player, Nate Colano. Girls Volleyball, most improved offense, Anna Olchansky. Most improved defense, Morgan Ransom. Girls Indoor Track, most valuable athlete on the track, Kaylee Maloof. Incredible athlete in the field, Rhiannon Butchko. <laughs> Indoor track, boys, Bennett, Ferrari, and <laughs> Boys volleyball, offensive MVP, Aiden Finnerty. Defensive MVP, Cole Thomas. Your 2021 MVPs, MIPs with all the people. Ariana Smith, 
Anna Pistoia, Dara Sung, Jasmine Tayo, and Elena Messi. 2004 in a tragic car accident, and this award is given every year in his memory. Corey was the ultimate teammate, caring, funny, and always supportive of others. This year's Corey Edick Memorial winner is Brandon Warner. Nate Milano. 
Girls Golf, Most Valuable Golfer, Jessica Griffin. Most Improved Golfer, Shayla Sanson. Boys Cross, Most Valuable Player, Matthew Kenny. Most Improved Player, Aiden Fredericks. MVP, Emma Beal. Most Improved Player, Sophia Ferns. The Unsung Hero Award, Natalie Sturick. Boys Outdoor Track, Most Valuable Athlete, Track and Field, Bennett Ferrari. Rocky L. <laughs> Girls Outdoor Track. MVP on the track, Riley King. <laughs> MVP in the field, Rhiannon Butko. <laughs> Most Improved Athlete, Sophia Jackson. <laughs> Softball, MVP, Natalie Quant. <laughs> Jaliana Sabatino. <laughs> Tennis, most valuable athlete, Jack Satterley. Most improved athlete, Chris Patel. Most valuable wrestler, Michael O'Brien. Most improved wrestler, Maximus Wonderlick. And the unsung hero, Nick Modaleski. Your MVPs and MIPs from the spring 2021 season. In 1982, the George Reese Memorial Award was established by ESMU Sports. This award was founded in memory of George Reese. George donated equipment and land, now known as Reese Field, for the specific purpose of youth athletic activities. This award is given out annually to the individual for their dedication to the ESMU Sports and the youth of our community. This year's award winner volunteered for ESMU Sports starting in 2003 as a coach within the boys lacrosse program. Prior to volunteering, his companies, Superior Seal and Trapper's Family Restaurant, were major sponsors for ESNU Sports, getting back to the youth of our community. He sat on the ESNU Sports board for three years as a community relations chair, and during COVID, he converted a section of his building at Superior Seal and Baby into a turf complex for spring lacrosse and soccer, then laid plywood on top of the turf and turned it into a basketball court fall and winter. For a while, it was the only show in town and gave hope to our basketball players. The recipient of this year's award is Greg Rinaldi. Greg, are you here? Just give me a wave. Give me a stand. I'm going to stand up. So I can there we go. The recipient of the next award has not only volunteered for ESNU Sports Soccer over the last few years as a volunteer coach, referee, and mentor within the program, he also grew up playing youth sports. He exemplified the qualities of a strong leader and adjusted to the ever-changing rules and regulations during the times of the pandemic. He demonstrated excellent communication skills with families and children while sharing his love of soccer. The ESMU Sports Board is proud to present the 
2021 Charlie Golovsky Memorial Award to Jordan Sampson. Special awards will be presented by Spartan coaches 
and represent some of the best and brightest student athletes that ESM has to offer. The first award is the male recipient of the Sportsmanship Award. I will speak on behalf of Coach Alex Ribzak, who could not be here this evening. This student athlete was a four sport athlete this past school year and embodied what it means to show and display sportsmanship within each of his respective sports. He is an incredibly positive person and a wonderful teammate and represented ESM athletics with class and loyalty, not only this past year, but throughout his high school career. He is one of the most humble and unselfish student athletes I have ever coached. Whether it was a game or practice, he was always smiling and remained optimistic regardless of the situation. It was a joy to coach him day in and day out and watch him grow as a volleyball player. He was selected to the all SCAC second team for boys volleyball in his very first year of varsity volleyball and led section three in blocks, helping lead ESM to a division title in the program's first year of varsity volleyball. I am sorry that I could not be here tonight. However, this award is well deserved as you will truly be missed next year. The 2020-2021 male recipient of the Sportsmanship Award is Will D'Agostino. Next up, to present the female recipient of the Sportsmanship Award is Coach Jim Gordon. It takes a lot of strength, both physically and mentally, to finish a three-mile cross-country race or a two-mile track race and stand near the finish line to congratulate both teammates and your opponents on a job well done after giving everything to that race when you'd rather be on the ground. Mary Roach is that student athlete. She exemplifies what it's like to be a great teammate and a gracious opponent. It's what every student athlete and coach should strive for. Mary's quiet demeanor does not mean she's not intense. She has, over the years, become a leader and a role model to the track and field program and the cross country team, and has helped the track team become one of the closest knit units in years, the formula for our success this season. Quiet at meets? No. You can hear her words of encouragement over everyone else's. That voice, with its words of encouragement and leadership, will sorely be missed. Mary Roach.
his success can be attributed to his incredible drive and work ethic, but more importantly, because he's a great person. Although many names are worthy of consideration, one in particular stood out, Jared Hunt.
I would like to congratulate and introduce this year's Female 2020 Academic Athlete Award to Abby Hudgens. Next up to present the Spartan Character Award Character Award for competitiveness is Coach Gilpatrick. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> so I stop. I stop walking out the door. You know, I get, you know, I'm a teacher. I got good ears and stuff. I, I pause. I'm like, holy. It, is, it was quiet for three seconds. And all of a sudden, I hear, yes. The whole team, you would have thought we won the sectional title right there. Hoot and holler and dance and everybody. I shut the door and I look at Coach Lothers. I'm like, boy, we're, we're lucky to coach these guys. So um, <clears throat> that was one of my favorite Gavin stories. Gavin for lacrosse was named first team all league for Tech this year. Coach McCoy said he did a phenomenal job as a captain this year. He'll be uh, playing lacrosse at the University of Richmond, where I have no doubt that he'll do everything he can to make the, the Spiders a better program. Um, I'm, I'm, I was blessed to coach him. Um, he's just a classy kid, um, and I just really appreciate everything he's done. So it's my honor to give the competitors award to Gavin Hotel. Next up to present the Spartan Character Award for competitiveness is Coach McCoy. Good evening. A true contender must consider the pure competitive spirit. The endless hours of hard work and perseverance translate into a drive and determination of the Lord. A spirit that allows competitors to beat all odds. A will to overcome adversity despite the obstacles he may endure. A true competitor wins over the crowd. But most importantly, he earns the utmost respect of his teammates, coaches, and opponents. The way this young man competed was always to this, this and every season. He scrapped for countless ground balls. He ran around and at times even threw opposing players. He even tallied a winning goal and winning, or excuse me, waning seconds of our most intense game this past season. But if you missed all these moments, you're sure not to miss his hair flowing out of the back of his helmet. My fondest memory of this young man dates back to his freshman season. That year we had a talented group of returning players. Yet we still wanted to invite him to try out the varsity. The grit he displayed the prior season and on the soccer field was well beyond his years. Throughout tryouts, we tried to envision the role he would play for us. We even entertained the idea of putting a long stick in his hands. In the end, the coaches and I had a difficult time deciding which level would be best for him to play. The last day of tryouts that year was canceled due to a snow day. Yes, in the spring. So I called him and wanted to talk about our dilemma. Should he join varsity and see how the season played out, or remain on JV knowing he would play every game and rarely come off the field? His simple response, Coach, I just, I just want to play. At that moment, we made the difficult yet correct decision to take a sure thing and have him play his freshman season on GD. To this day, I'm grateful for this player's maturity and selflessness. All of these and so many more distinguishable traits has earned this young man an appointment to the United States Military Academy. It is my honor to present the Spartan Character Award in competitiveness to the fiercest member of our Boys and Cross team, Eric Callahan. I present the character award for leadership is Coach John Harrington.
don't set out to be a leader. They set out to make a difference. It's never about the role. It's always about the goal. Our district made the commitment to train staff and students in Covey's habits of highly effective people years ago. This year's seniors have had layers of Covey sprinkled over many years of instruction. And I think the proof is in our senior leadership. Covey says, what you do has far greater impact than what you say. Do the right thing when no one is looking. This is definitely the case for tonight's leadership honoree. I've had the pleasure of coaching this young man for seven varsity seasons and have truly enjoyed watching him grow as an athlete, as a young man, and as an impact leader on every team he's been a part of. His actions have a profound impact on the effort and achievement of those around him, those he inspires, those he instills confidence in, and those he encourages through his actions. Hard work and dedication are always a recipe for success. This young man is the athlete that will literally run the extra mile, schedule training sessions in the off season, express his love of the game, help with fundraising, and clean up after a long game, practice, or meet. He is always willing to do whatever it takes. What he says takes his leadership to the next level. There's been more than one starstruck teammate or younger athlete in the program who obviously glows, who absolutely glows after a kind word a word of encouragement, passionate cheer, or simply being included. A naturally talented athlete and enthusiastic student of the game, getting noticed by Spencer Carnival has made more than one athlete's day. He's the one who encourages his teammates with a kind word or connection, verbalizes commitments to goals, brings the team together in an emotionally charged break, and remains positive even in the face of setbacks or injury. He has been the soul of many successful seasons at ESM and will carry his leadership into his next chapter at Robert Williams, where he will study sports management and contribute to the baseball program. Leaders initiate action, offer guidance, inspire, instill confidence, build morale, serve as role models, unify others around them around a common goal. Leaders are the image of the organization. I will greatly miss this young man in the fall and next spring, but I know he is moving on to accomplish great things. I am honored to present the 2021 Character Award for Leadership to Spencer Carnival. Good evening, everyone. I'm Bob Harrington. I'm the girls' varsity basketball coach. I'm very proud to announce that the 2021 Character Award for Leadership goes to Rachel Underwood. Rach is a three-sport athlete for the Spartans, playing field hockey, basketball, and softball. I believe one very important characteristic of a good leader is someone people look to when adversity strikes. A couple more characteristics of a good leader is someone who is committed to their team and who cares about their team greatly. I'm not just talking about sports teams. There are many types of teams in this world. Rachel checks all three of these boxes and probably a few more. When I spoke with a couple of her other coaches, they all agreed. Of course, we also agree that she is one of the best pregame hype players around. She has definitely left her mark on ESM, especially girls basketball program, and I'm going to miss her tremendously. We wish her the best of luck in the classroom and on the basketball court next year at OCC. Congratulations to Rachel Underwood, the recipient of the 2021 Character Award for Leadership. Next up, is that the character award for this series? Okay. As many of you 
you know, I approach life through the lens of science. So it's only appropriate that I begin with a quote from Marie Curie. She said, I was taught the way of progress is neither swift nor easy. What a true statement for all of our distance runners. I've been given the honor of introducing an athlete who exemplifies the character trait of perseverance. This quote is wholly fitting. Progress in running is neither swift nor easy and requires a great deal of perseverance. Perseverance is a noun, of course, meaning persistence in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success. As a verb, persevering means to persist in a state, enterprise, or undertaking in spite of counter-influences, opposition, or discouragement. As a cross-country coach, perseverance is an essential ingredient in each practice, race, and season. You simply cannot be successful in our sport without it. I want you to close your eyes for a second. Visualize the perfect athlete. In my case, the perfect runner. Who is she? What does she say? How does she lead? How do her teammates respond to her? How does she interact with her coaches? What is her work ethic? How does she compete? How does she respond to setback and also to opportunity? Open your eyes and keep that image in your head. I'll get back to that in a second. Our honoree might not be your typical distance runner. When she decided to come out for cross country, her motives were based on fitness and a goal of improving her basketball performance. I don't think love of running was ever in her vocabulary at that time. That season, she showed up every day, put in the work, earned her times dropping from over 34 minutes for a 5K down to 30. Over the course of the season, she exemplified many of those perfect athlete, athlete characteristics. Her engagement and leadership with the team was extraordinary. People saw her commitment and the standard she held, her, held herself to, and the echoes were felt throughout the team and the actions of those around her. She didn't stop. She persevered. The next year, she came back and enjoyed the fruits of her labor, breaking through the elusive 30-minute barrier and inching her way down to 25 minutes at our Tully Invitational, all the while interacting with kindness and respect to both her teammates and coaches, a genuine kindness that shines through adversity and overcomes setbacks. This year, our COVID year, was of course challenging for all athletes. After months on lockdown, no one was really in the best typical fitness we'd expect from them from year-round training. She embraced the challenge of accepting where you are. What a great life lesson. Leading by example, making the most of what you have with the time you're given. And as such, earned the sweetness of success on many levels. She experienced success time and again because of her, she persevered with grace, dignity, and tenacity. I've been blessed to have coached her over the years and know that her character will guide her future successes both academically and athletically. She was one of five, only five student athletes in our entire student body this year that responded to the opportunity to compete in all four of the seasons. Back to my original question, who's your ideal athlete? When I visualize this elusive athlete, the image I see now takes on the likeness of Lauren Rahinen, who are joined here this evening by her parents. She has earned my respect through her perseverance and commitment to her personal best and her team every day, every minute, and the precious seconds we have in our season. She works to her max while also encouraging and leading others to do the same. This year's Character Award for Perseverance goes to Lauren Brigina. Christine Taylor Memorial Sports Awards are given by the ESM Athletic Department to two very deserving multi sports seniors who have been recognized by the ESM coaches as the most outstanding athletes in their class. To present the male recipient of the 2021 Christine Taylor Memorial Award for the ESM Spartan Male Outstanding Athlete of the Year is Coach Bill Patrick. Stat line of this person here. Um, 
Devin Moscato, Buffalo. Four-year starter. Started 78 games in a row. He did not come out of the game for about seven years. Um, you can ask Mike behind me because I got like double eyes every time I took him out of the game from an athletic director. He scored 864 points in about three and a half years, 136 off, 1,000 points. He had a short senior year, probably know where I'm going with this one. He averaged 11 points, four assists, two steals per game over his four year career. He was team captain four years in a row. He was team MVP the last two years. He was the SEDC Empire Division Player of the Year this year. He was voted the All CNY um, team for big schools. He was nominated for Player of the Year for the big schools. Oh, he also won the 2020 Coach of the Year award, but seeing how he was a player, they had to give that one to me. For boys uh, volleyball in their first, first season uh, in school history, Devin was the first team all league. He was the team captain and led all sets of three in, in, in assists as a center. The problem with Devin is that stats don't begin to tell his story and what he has done for the ESM basketball program and the ESM community as a whole. Devin is a great student, leader, and person. A positive culture, work ethic, tenacity, Team first mentality permeates through everything he does. In an away game, and he was a freshman, he was kind of smaller than he is now, a little skinnier. And there was a couple of senior guards from the other team that were really giving him a hard time. They were grabbing his jersey, they were all like, I knew what they were doing, they were trying to rub him up a little bit to see if he can handle it. So I, I wasn't too happy about it, and I let you know, the refs know about it. They stopped the game and they talked to the two players. And they thought, he went on to uh, we win, win the game, and, and he was the leading scorer for the game as a freshman. His sophomore year, and it was the Hall of Fame game um, against FM, we were down seven points with 38 seconds left. Everybody was out in the, the Hall of Fame lobby, you know, looking at the inductees, and we were trying to you know, still win the game. And <clears throat> I called my last time out. Devin looks at me and goes, Coach, we got this. We got right where we want. He had two steals, a couple of baskets, and we were down two with about eight seconds left. Someone took a shot. And if you watch it, uh, I watched it on Twitter. He probably wants me still. <laughs> he runs through about three kids from FM. On the other side of the court, gets the ball and throws it to Jack Shields, who gets the 26 footer um, to win the game, and the rest is history. But it, it was what he did to keep the play alive, who do whatever he needs to do to win the game. My assistant coach, uh, Tom Cooney, uh, coached for 55 years at multiple levels, he coached for the lane. He said, I don't know what point guards you had in your career. He said, I had three. I go, really? Yeah. That was one of them. He's just a true point guard, a true team first kid, and it's just what he did to the, with the program is just it's unbelievable. Um, we had a summer league game a couple years ago, and I started talking to him. Yeah, we have to take more initiative on this. Start shooting the ball more. You know, he was passing to everybody. He's like, Coach, I'm just trying to think of you guys in the offense. I go, who's going to go? It's hard to argue with someone like that. He's so unselfish, he just wants to win. And one of his best teams of his career. His father told me this when he came up to me after the game. Devin had three points. We beat Bishop Grimes. And the best part of the game, if I know some of the parents were here, it doesn't matter where they were in the school. I don't know, I forget the guy's name, the coach for uh, Grimes, but he was screaming so loud at halftime. My halftime talk was we just listened to the other coach scream and yell and say, I mean, the game plan worked. We have Devin, he could scream all you want. They threw everything out. He controlled the game, had three points. Win. His final game of his career at JD was their senior day. Um, I feel bad, but I don't. Um, we were down four with about 30 seconds left. And we were winning most of the game, just hit a little, little hiccup there. And we hit our last time out. I stole a line from Devin. I said, hey, I think we got it right where we want them. This is what we're going to do. Devin hit a three pointer from the corner with two guys on him. We cut it to one. We get the ball back, Devin dribbles down. I know exactly what he was doing. He took two guys, came right on him, and he passes to Matt Virgil. 
this is what controversy starts. It's Matt Burgess said I was an ass. <laughs> but he wants to be my kid to shoot the three. But the ball went right to Nick Brown when we made a three play high in the air and landed it at the buzzer. And we win. And I'm just so happy with the seniors and Devin um, for what he did. The four tenets of ESF basketball play hard, play smart, play together, play with class. I think now we need to have the fifth tenet. Play like that. It's my absolute honor to award the Male Athlete of the Year to Devin Moscato. Thank you. 
<laughs> and I'm honored to have this privilege to do this. And uh, I thank uh, I thank your parents for asking me to do this because it means a lot. It's the first time that I've had the opportunity to do this, and um, I, I'm excited and, and, and humbled to be speaking to this. This evening, I have the honor of presenting the female recipient of what I've always believed to be the most prestigious award a student athlete can receive. The Section 3 Scholar Athlete Award recognizes the two student athletes at the school that have consistently demonstrated excellence in athletics, academics, and in the community, going above and beyond the high expectations placed upon all of our student athletes here at ESM. Going above and beyond is what sets this particular individual apart. In addition to being ranked third in the class of 2021 and her participation in two varsity sports, this student athlete has earned a variety of athletic and academic awards, participates in a myriad of extracurricular activities, and still finds time to volunteer her time in the community. The list of accomplishments is long and very impressive. For the sake of time, I will focus on two of her extracurriculars that have been vitally important to not only me, but ESM athletics in general. In particular, I have witnessed her growth as a leader within the ESM Varsity Club. This club, established four years ago, was designed to give our student athletes a voice in ESM athletics and served as a vital think tank for positive movement within the school. Over the past two years, the loudest voice and greatest influence belong to this individual. On numerous occasions, she has held me to task and encouraged me to continue to meet with this group of student leaders despite the challenges of the past 15 months. As a result, the students of the Varsity Club developed public service announcements during the early stages of the pandemic encouraging the student body to stay positive and offering strategies for coping with the challenges of isolation. As a member of the Section 3 Student Athlete Advisory Club, she had the opportunity to meet with student leaders throughout the state. One of the major initiatives of this group was a focus on mental health and how we, through athletics, can promote awareness and acceptance. As a result, she helped spearhead our Mental Health Awareness Week in May, hanging posters throughout the halls of the high school and distributing green wristbands to the students of ESM. We are hopeful that this initiative will help to end the stigma and start the conversation. We have the work of this individual in this club to thank for helping spread the word and making a difference. This individual will be missed for her leadership her initiative during tough times, and her continued advocacy for all of our student athletes. A voice that helped move ESM athletics forward when everything else was standing still. She will continue her education next fall at RPI, where she will major in environmental and computer science and continue her athletic career in field hockey. I'm honored to have had the opportunity to work with her over the past four years and can't wait to see what the future holds. She will undoubtedly do great things. This year's female recipient of the Section 3 Scholar Athlete Award is Addie Harrington.
present the male recipient of the Section 3 Scholar Athlete Award, Coach Mark Carr. Last one, I'll keep it moving. All right, it is my honor and privilege to be the one to introduce this year's Section 3 Male, male Scholar Athlete Award to Jimmy Burns. When describing Jimmy, I would like to use the baseball analogy of a five-tool player, which, is, which in layman's terms means he's good at just about anything. That is Jimmy Ferns as a person, a student, as, and as an athlete. There's nothing he can't do or that he will attempt or, and or exceed at, whether it is in the classroom, on the athletic field, or out in the real world. He is ESM's very own renaissance man. I first met Jimmy at Pine Grove when Coach Knapp introduced him to me. He walked right up, shook my hand, introduced himself, said he'd like to try soccer. I said, great. As he walked away, you could see how he walked. He carried himself. That was an athlete. No matter what sport it is,